Hey, what's up guys? My name is John Silva and today we're going to know how to render light onto basic shapes. Before we begin actually doing any kind of painting, um, I want to show you guys a list I have here of several different kind of um, lights. So we're going to go through this rather quickly and beginning by the name of the light types. So we have sunlight, soft light, ambient light, spotlight, artificial light, hard light, dusk light, flashlight, and rim light. Our favorite rim light. Now, I made a quick explanation, each one of them, and we're gonna begin with sunlight, warm, vibrant colors with hard cast shadows. Well, if you probably go outside, you have sun, so you, it's pretty self-explanatory. Mm, soft light, it's an even light, uh, with minimal shadows and contrast, we have ambient light, indirect light bounced from one surface to another. This, you most likely be using this type um, of light mixed with other lights because it, it's occurring all the time. Um, then we have spotlight. It's a focused light on a specific area. Dramat it has dramatic contrast of shadow and light. So anything that you want to, as it's saying, uh, have a, a dramatic effect or a dramatic render, then this is your go-to light. Then we have artificial lights, which are light bulbs, studio, uh, studio lights, lamp lights, etc. Um, anything that's basically man-made, right? Um, let's see, second type. Uh, we have hard light, We've got a, an eye in there. It's an intense, uh, it has intense brightness and exposure. Also high contrast. So this is something that it's not as pretty looking as the rest of the lights we just talked so far. But if you want um, in some areas of your painting to really bring a uh, focal point with light then hard light can be quite uh, also as spotlight can be quite um it, it can bring your eye into it uh, quite easily to your focal point then we have uh, dusk light and beautiful warm colors great for silhouettes well you you probably seen dusk right so it's pretty self-explanatory uh, we have flashlight, which is good for lighting a subject in dark backgrounds. And rim light, um, lightens the edges of a subject, great for edge silhouette accentuation. Now, we all know what rim light is and we <laughs> uh, often we overuse it <laughs> as artists, but um, hopefully we're not going to do too, too much of it. Uh, on um on today's video so yeah i already have a pre-rendered video and we're gonna go right into it let's go all right welcome back now here i already have uh, prepared uh, three shapes so that we're not gonna be you know spending too too much time on um, useless things we're gonna focus on the actual rendering of each shape if you're doing an exercise like this it's actually um it, it's actually quite good but at the same time you you got to make sure that you have diversity in your shapes and that is like the number one thing that don't just do cubes or one type of one type of shape that you find more easy try to go even more complex than these basic shapes that that I that I have here. Um, personally, my my uh, my worst enemy out of these three shapes is the middle, the, the the cylinder one. And you'll see it's the one I spend the most time on. Uh, right now, I'm deciding more and less where I want the light to be, uh, and also I'm making a a little symbol indicating that it's the sun. Uh, Basically, just to to show what what type of light is that um, that little pointer. Renaming. 
things. It's always good to, to be organized. I used to be super disorganized and do whatever and then get lost in layers. Um, I still get lost in layers regardless. So, um, right. Now, next step after deciding where the light goes, uh, roughly. Now, when rendering form, whatever shape it may be, you got to take into consideration um, the planes of uh, the planes and, and the size of each um, shape that you have uh, on your picture. Now, think about it as a 3D render. When I'm doing this kind of almost, almost perspective grid, it's, it's not as neat as I would like to because I don't, I don't have that much time, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I mean, but um, you know how if you Google 3D wireframes, um, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Where each little uh, square, it's called a face, and each face, if it as it goes away or or towards the light source, it's gonna be rendered. That each single square is gonna be rendered differently um again just just google it you you'll know exactly um uh, you'll see exactly what what i'm talking about and this is very important to actually draw over it now mine is clumsy and i apologize about that just that um as i as i explained seconds ago uh, time time is money <laughs> so we got to be fast uh but you you personally want you want to take your precious time and make sure that it's accurate as possible like when i was doing this as a starting uh artist i was doing a, a bunch of this and i mean like so many hundreds um drawing uh basic shapes and then drawing those those red lines uh basically indicating the faces of uh, that shape now I didn't on the cylinder, as I said, it's my worst enemy out of these three. Um I tried at first to draw by hand and I was failing at it and I was seeing that uh I'm wasting too much time. So I decided to cheat a little bit. Since we're in Photoshop. Stretch that all the way down. Um so I, yeah, it's more of a demonstration to teach you what to do. Um really try not to cut corners i didn't cut any corners and a lot of artists who do this type of uh, training they didn't either so don't don't get you know just because i'm doing don't don't think that that you should you should do it too or you know what uh you can do whatever you want but it's just my advice now we have the little circle i thought it was actually going to be are there usually things that are turning away or towards you or are a bit more harder to to draw and, and make it accurate? Now, th this, I actually spent uh, quite a bit of time doing this. It's just that you're watching the sped up video. Um, but I, I every single line, even though I'm kind of hurrying up, um, but not to the point where I'm not thinking, right? And that's the most important thing. Every single line you put down towards or away from perspective, you want to think if it's accurate and if it's going towards the right direction. Now, on this uh, on this ball here, I'm actually doing some simple divisions, not too complex as the other ones, because we, we, we won't really need to. Now putting vertical, vertical lines to create the squares. And now notice um, when we get there, you'll notice that at the edges, as, it, as the shape is turning away, I'm putting the lines closer and closer to one another. That's indicating how hard is the shape turning. 
and that's extremely important for you to do on on shapes that are turning away from you now doing the top is also important we know that it's flat but even flat things um go like go into the horizon they go uh, away from us and, and into um into perspective and away from from perspective so it, the same as the uh, rectangle on the left side you you got to yeah right now i'm adding those like a couple more uh lines just to even if it's not super accurate although you should as i said you don't want to um I mean, you want to actually show if it's getting further or closer to you. Now, on the circle one, I'm not really, I'm just indicating like dotted line uh, I guess you could do the same for the rest of the other shapes but I'm I'm much more confident uh, on the circle um, on so many tutorials that I do I do a bunch of I start with a circle so if you're super good on one thing then it's it is okay for you to not spend as much time as you uh, would usually do uh, and use that time that you saved on the thing that you're better at um, use it on on another shape or another thing that you're actually not that comfortable with Now checking if everything is okay, and I'm making the um, making the form lines uh, a little little lighter, so that when I'll start painting, it won't bother me as much. Now we already established. Now that I'm gonna start rendering, we already st established in the beginning that we want a sunlight, most likely kind of a clear clear sunlight. Um, we're gonna see how clear is it gonna be. Uh, changing the background because it's very important. Uh, often, often um, starting artists still like render things nicely, but with a white background and light is affected by the environment really a lot too because of the the bouncing light and the colors do mix in so it is important to whatever light you chose don't leave a white background and of course you have to think uh, what time of the day it is and how clear the um, the weather is as well because that's going to affect how light is interacting unless it's uh, on an interior then the light situation would be different now i started with my lightest i already done that and now i'm going with my medium medium tone i'm always referencing the direction of the light on the, on the left side but it's not it's not a hundred percent so it's more of a guideline so that you you, you keep remembering more than the actual accurate direction so as you may notice that i gave uh, a bit of a bouncing light coming from the bottom in the shadows and now moving on right away to the cylinder now you'll see me trying a couple of different things here on the cylinder first i was lassoing now i'm selecting inside so I, I don't want to be <laughs> I already know how to render it I don't want to be bothered to 
to manually go in and paint it, which in the end I do anyways. Now it's important to have um, the form lines, the red lines uh, on because that's what's going to indicate, especially on, on rounded uh, objects, uh, you're going to need these kind of guides. Um, if you notice, I'm going by the lines, almost like each row is a, a value and color. And as it's turning towards the light source, it becomes brighter and uh, more towards yellow. And the opposite obviously happens as you turn away. Uh, one thing I didn't mention uh, was with light, you with direct sunlight, most of the time you'll have like a, a terminal uh, a light. Uh, I mean, a terminal uh, shadow where where the light and the shadow meet and becomes the darkest in there. And that's actually quite important to make uh, a realistic type of sunlight sunlight uh, rendering. I'm filling in slowly but surely, keeping in mind where each square is facing. So since it's the shadow side, um, you can't forget that there's other things around that object, right? So uh, for example, just the environment in itself, it's going to reflect some light into the cylinder. As you can see, there, that's why, even though it's in the shadow, there's some areas that are lighter because they're, they're bouncing light, right? And I'm doing a little bit of cleanup, checking my form, form lines because that square is in front of the cylinder and the light is in an angle that it's going to just about touch the bottom of that cylinder and give kind of like a, a cut with the shadow right later on i'm going to i'm going to put the shadows in i tend to put that as last when doing this kind of example so that we can focus on one thing at a time doing a little bit of cleanup not that i have to but you know just for presentation is it's always nice to have Still detailing, giving little shadows here and there. Always keeping in mind what could be around it, but at the same time, we don't want, want to overcomplicate things. And doing the top of the cylinder with the, yeah, with just a flat color. Now I'm noticing that uh, that shadow is a bit too soft for me. Uh, let's not forget it's a sunlight. sunlight uh, like 80% of the time, if it's direct, it's going to make a very clear cast shadow, right? Almost like it, it cuts right into uh, another shape. Now, the top part is going to be the lightest because it's going to, it's obviously it's the most exposed to our light source. And there's not going to be too much of a gradation because it's a flat area. It's the same. It's exactly the same as the as the square we have on the left. Now I think I'm I think I'm ready to move on here. Just double checking everything before actually going into the into the circle to that little ball now the ball is right next yeah i'm gonna yeah i'm, I'm gonna do the same as the other ones just fill in with some color now the little ball is right next to the cylinder but it's up in the air floating so i thought that would be a cool idea to make things a bit more interesting So it's a bit further away from us, but 
still close enough that um, later on you'll see I, I'm going to add uh, cast shadow in there. And honestly, on, on a circle, like on a ball, doing a cast shadow can be quite tricky. So make sure to study, make sure to uh, look at a lot of reference, make your own reference. The best way to learn this type of uh, just rendering realistically in this way is by doing um, still lifes. You want to do a lot, a lot of still lifes, whether it's from photos, but Honestly, the best would be for you to just do it from from life. You know, you set up a table with super simple objects and uh, point a point a light bulb onto it, like a, like a spotlight. You know, and you you learn really really a lot about forms. So yeah, you want to you. I keep repeating myself because it's the point of this uh, tutorial is that you want to know, um, you, you want to pay attention to the red lines because that those red lines are the form, and that's exactly the most important thing. Um, even more important than the light itself, if you want to render it properly. Although they they're basically at the same level to be honest form and light they go hand to hand one cannot go with without the other otherwise everything is going to look flat right if i would make those red lines on that circle just straight ahead right or horizontally and vertically then it, it would look flat right like a piece of like a sticker you know if you ever have a sticker uh, of uh, of something and you put a light light source on it and what happens it's flat right it's gonna lighten it up flat i'm giving a little bit of bouncing light to it everything no matter what kind of light source you have 90 percent of the time it's gonna have uh, bouncing light naturally unless you try to recreate a specific type of uh, light setup right but even then as soon light enters a completely dark room at one point or another it's going to bounce off from another object uh, onto you or, or something around you But as usual, like there can be um, there can be situations where that doesn't happen, uh, and that doesn't mean it's wrong. Yeah, we want to use the, uh, this kind of knowledge more as a um, a way to break the rules. The more you know about it, the more you can modify it, the more you can make it your own. And change things um, as you please without breaking too much. In fact, uh, a lot of times breaking, uh, if you know what you're doing, it's going to make things much more interesting and appealing to whoever is looking at at your picture, like exaggerating things or or taking a certain aspect that could help your picture. It's definitely going to gonna enhance and even make it more real right I'm trying to add a, a little bit of glow around uh, the edges mainly around the edges of of that cast shadow now I could have rendered this much better given the time um like 40 minutes i think it was 40 minutes 45 minutes uh, it's not nearly enough you want to spend two hours uh, i'd say minimum at least that's what i did so now that i felt that i'm done with with everything i'm gonna draw in the shadows now 
everything, and this part of, of rendering, everything is in perspective. Light is in perspective, shadow is in perspective, and the objects themselves is in, in perspective, like literally, no matter what you see, you see it in perspective and is in perspective. So I'm, as I'm drawing the shadows, I am thinking about the perspective of if the light hits one corner, how much is it going to extend, right? And of course, depending on the, the light source, how far does the shadow go and the angle of the light is ex extremely important too. But uh, since it's, a, it's like a sunlight, it's going to be mostly uh, hard and it's going to extend because it's not too low, but it's at the point where, if you notice on the cylinder, the top part on the left side and the left side of the cylinder, there's an area where it almost blends the top part with the side, with the left side. Um, that that's basically indicating that the light is low, but it's not it's not a golden hour yet, you know. I'm just cleaning up a little bit. It's still not a hundred percent. I'd have to. Uh, I'm I'm kind of eyeballing to be honest. Um, now here I am. I made a circle under uh, the circle. <laughs> under the ball and then I'm kind of measuring how the light would uh, you know if there would be rays of light where would it touch the ground and then that's where I'm gonna draw my shadow in as you notice I modified the light source a little bit because from from the moment I started to put in those uh, shadows I decided that there's a little bit of a different angle that I want to make this uh, Cool picture, even though it's just simple, simple shapes. Now I'm just giving, giving a title to it, so it looks nice and clean. I believe we're close to wrapping it up. Nah, okay, I'm still adding a little glow. I feel like it still needs a little bit of glow here and there. All right, this is also very important where on the square, on that side of the square, you're going to have a light being reflected because it hits the cylinder and then it the light bounces back into uh, the shadow area of that square. Adding a little bit of ambient occlusion. That's where when, when two shapes meet and they touch, uh, it's not a real shot. I mean, it's still a shadow, but... It's a very thin um, shadow and usually quite dark. I'm trying to add a, just a little glow to... Eh, honestly, at this point, I'm done. I'm just trying to make things fancy and make my, my light source glow. So, so yeah. We're done with uh, with part one if you like this then please be sure to watch part two where we're gonna mix light we're gonna make things harder for us even though it's basic shapes we're gonna uh, mix in i believe three types of light and make a very nice cinematic um render uh, on these shapes so yeah uh, thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next part